Did you know that Sigma make cameras? It's here for playback, this gets you into your menus. Um, this is some multifunction buttons that are here. I've had to overexpose the image there just so you can see on your camera here, but it's right, fixed focal length. So the only thing this will do here is uh, focus the image here as well and then pressing this here we can turn on different views that you can see within the actual screen as well itself. Now most people would know Sigma in regards to their quality lenses that they would make but they also make cameras and what I have here is a Sigma DP3 Quattro. It's a very unusual camera. I'll give you a look around it in a moment but it's an incredibly interesting camera to be able to use. It's a crop sensor as well. So, you know, you've got some nice features that are within that. And it's fixed with one lens at the moment and it's a Sigma glass. So, you know, it's going to be good and it's a 50 mil. So with the crop sensor, that's going to around 85 mil. So it's a perfect focal distance for a portrait point of view. And the camera as well itself, um, I've used it for a small period of time, not a lot, but a bit here and there, and I'm quite impressed in regards to the features that it has, but moreover, I'm more impressed in regards to the quality of the images that I can get from it. It's a very natural colour. Um, the ones that I've actually seen and utilised so far, I've had to do very little processing when I brought them into the computer because the colour rendition was absolutely phenomenal on it. Um, I'll give you a look at the camera here in a bit more detail and I'll talk you through some things that I like in it anyway, but yeah, it's a very, very interesting camera. Looking at the camera as well itself, you can see that it's a very, very unusual shape and the form factor of it as well, it's very nice to hold in two hands. So when you've got one hand that's on it here, because it's so light, okay, it's fair, it's easy enough to, to use, but when you're actually holding the camera on a point like this, it is actually very, very comfortable. It has a 50 mil Sigma lens and it is fixed focus. So the only thing this ring will do here is, sorry, it's fixed focal length. So the only thing this will do here is uh, focus the image. You have, uh, simple button here turn it on there's your button for your modes here's your shutter this can adjust as well then your aperture this can adjust your um, shutter speed and that's pretty much it from the top of the camera you also have this removable plate here so now you expose a hot shoe so you can be able to utilize again you know an off-camera flash um, or you want to put a microphone or something like that as a holder but it's a very interesting shape anyway and i'll show you the back of the camera now next so on the back of the camera here, we have very, very simple functions and simple buttons effectively. And you can see on the screen here, so I've got no viewfinder, so it's only a digital display on the back of the camera. You've got one button that's here for playback. This gets you into your menus. Um, this is some multifunction buttons that are here as well. And then pressing this here, we can turn on different views that you can see within the actual screen as well itself. So you can have a clear and you can have your level and you can have your uh, histogram as well that's there. Now I have the image here slightly overexposed so that you can see it here on the camera that's recording. On the, over on the right hand side here, you've got a D-pad and a central function button and it's very straightforward going into that. You go in here and you can change your focus. So you can go into a manual type of focus. It also has a macro function as well, which we'll test as well in a moment. But yeah, very basic on the features, but quite, I suppose, intuitive as well in regards to how to take a photograph and composing the photograph as well itself. A uh, disadvantage that I've seen so far with it is it's a very, very slow sensor. So if I want to take a photograph, which I'll show you right now. So we'll take this photograph here. Once we take the shot, it now has to take that and it's now processing the image still. It's now displayed the image as well there. So it's probably about a one and a half to two seconds of a refire time in between each. But that's okay from a landscape point of view. I wouldn't really see it being used on a sports uh, environment as well itself. But the quality of this is most important and the quality of the image is incredible. The color rendition, like I said, from the outset is absolutely beautiful. So, you know, you can kind of see it here on the screen, even though we're looking at taking a video of another screen as well itself. But the color rendition that we get back is very natural. And where I've got the camera now at the moment is in a bit of fluctuating light as well. So there's a bit of light now that's just after appearing. So we'll take a shot here and we'll see. Is that telling me it's overexposed? So very quickly, we can bring this down here. We can change your exposure. Just with this button, which is the one on the top over here. This will change my uh, F, so I'm going to change that to F11, get a nice depth of field. And the histogram here is bang in the middle, simple, take my focus and two second timer. 
and now again it takes the shot as well. It shoots in RAW, the image size is 29 uh, megabytes. There is another function as well, but I haven't been able to get it to work yet, but you can have super resolution as well, I believe, you know, and you need to have extremely fast card. Unfortunately, the card that I have isn't the fast version, but um, I imagine that would be quite interesting as well to get a very high resolution image. But yeah, you know, I'll give you a look at some of the images I've taken here anyway, and we'll try out the macro function as well of this camera as well itself in a moment. Okay, so I've had to overexpose the image there just so you can see on your camera here. But um, now ordinarily when you want to take a photograph, you half press the shutter button and, or back button focus if you want to use automatic focus. And it finds a focal point and it will give you that focus and you can take your photograph um, just by taking your shot like that. However, with the Sigma, the feature that I love in regards to it is when you half press the shutter and then you turn your focus it gives you a zoom in feature in regards to what you're looking at so now you can see there the focus that I'm trying to do and when you get it exactly and it's really finite and where you want to be able to have that so you can take that plane of focus from here to that next point here or bring it out further but it's phenomenal in regards to what you can do to be able to get your, your focus spot on and I've not seen that in any other camera and I think it's an extremely interesting feature Finally taking the shot with this lens is because like I said it's 50 mil and it's on the crop sensor it's 85 mil so that bale of hay that's in front of me here is actually nine meters away and it's nine meters away for me to be able to get it in the frame as well itself that it's not going to be too close that it has some bit of presence within the frame also it's not a bad old feature you know it's a good feature i suppose really from a portrait point of view like i said from the outset but from a landscape point of view it forces me to be able to step back not get up as close as i normally would because i normally shoot with a wide lens but this is going to be 85 mil the build quality is phenomenal on this camera the battery life actually is exceptional the ISO and the low light capabilities aren't the greatest if you shoot at 100 so it's very similar if you were going to be shooting from a film point of view put in your ISO 100 film you're fixed in regards to that and it does really challenge you to be able to take a good photograph and understand I suppose the exposure triangle which is the fundamentals of photography themselves so this camera as well itself I think it comes in around 850 euros so it's less than a thousand uh, euros or dollars it's a phenomenally good build like I said it's a great camera to be able to test yourself and it's something I've really enjoyed using and it's something I will use quite a lot I think uh, as time will go on. So I do hope you enjoyed my review of this secret unknown camera from Sigma. Uh, if you ever get an opportunity to try it out, try it out because it's a phenomenally good camera like I say. And uh, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel I would really appreciate hit that subscribe button below and until the next time, schlange fall.